the intervention in my class. And I'd also like to thank my supervisors, Stuart Riddle and Georgina Barton at University of Southern Queensland for their ongoing support and advice. So yes, I'll be talking about fake news and critical media literacy in uh, English for Academics Purpose class. So a little bit of back about me. So I've been actually also for a year, I've been teaching in Japan uh, for the last 11 years, mostly just getting students ready for foreign universities uh, and their English proficiency. So from, uh, from January this year, I've been teaching the Deep 1 and Deep 2 course at Union Institute of Language in Brisbane, Queensland. So the direct entry English program is just your typical English for academic purposes course. Uh, it's some calls for bridging, some call them pathways. Uh, yeah, we just call them deep. So these students are ongoing to their, they've already been accepted into their ongoing institutions, tertiary, uh, yeah, TAFE or university courses. So in this program, the students are, the curriculum revolves around them understanding academic discussions, lectures, taking notes, writing academic text, delivering seminars. And also I've uh, seen, I've, I've tried to expose them to critical pedagogy, which requires them to think independently and critically analyze something that they may have never been exposed to. So critical media literacy. So critical media literacy, so what is it? So according to Kellner and Scher and Kay and Houston, it's the ability to read, analyze and decode media text, to identify credible and reliable information and to critically assign a value to media information. So in my study, critical media literacy was operationalized as the ability to detect fake news in social media. Social media being something that they're very familiar with, that's very accessible. And yeah, everyone likes fake news. So fake news, also known as junk news, misinformation, alternative facts, hoke news, and uh, a post-truth, I think Amir said earlier. So this is news consisting of deliberate disinformation or hoaxes spread in the media. So first step is the ability to identify fake news. Second is, to, is the ability to verify its lack of authenticity. And the third point that I'm looking to in my class is the ability to produce a social media response. So why number three, is still is very important. And the reason being is it, it's not just important to identify and verify, but it's also encompasses all the critical media literacy skills to actually produce a response to it, kind of like a debunk. Uh, and in this study, it was to produce a multimodal response to their chosen fake news article. So why is it important to teach about fake news? So uh, a great quote I found by Bali was the problem isn't that fake news itself, it's that young people are willing to believe it with no skepticism, which is quite shocking and a good reason to teach it in classrooms. So a study conducted recently in Australia added more weight to the necessity as this is a teaching pedagogy. Uh, Australians aged 16 to 20 uh, reportedly having difficulty consuming and verifying news at school and home. And they went on to say that they were not confident about spotting fake news online. And that was due because only surprisingly 20% had received lessons in school in the past year to help them work out if stories were true or not. So it's 
despite the ubiquity of media in contemporary society, it surprisingly has not found prominence in formal education. So critical media literacy. So carrying on from my last slide, research shows that adolescents wish to cover uh, more media related content in formal education. And this form of literacy has the potential to engage EAP students who are usually exposed to intensive academic curricula, like what I previously mentioned, all of your traditional test taking with IELTS and uh, Pearson uh, and essay writing and all, all of the traditional ones. And it's in my teaching experience, this somewhat neglects critical literacy. And the students sometimes have a, a, a lack of exposure to critical pedagogy. And an emerging literacy like critical media literacy can help them develop their critical thinking skills and their media information literacy. So critical media literacy is, as I said before, it's an emerging pedagogy and, but it still carries a lot of, uh, it incorporates a lot of critical literacy skills that have been true and time tested. And some of these are listed as meaning making, assessing information and evaluating information. So according to Kuran Sindhu, these critical literacy skills are linked to tertiary, uh, successful tertiary integration for foreign students. Uh, it's critical literacy is a core component of Queensland secondary schools. And this type of proficiency is expected at the tertiary level. So what I wanted from this study that I conducted uh, earlier this year was I wanted to help my students successfully transition into their tertiary programs. And I also wanted that, I also wanted to develop a, a syllabus for students in an EAP program. So this brings me on to my first lesson. So before students can come become proficient in spotting fake news on social media platforms. First, I wanted to build up their knowledge on the types of people who typically start and spread fake news. So I found this video, uh, this, uh, this is a, a link which uh, it's, it will be uploaded onto the English Australia website. Uh, it's by Mariana Spring, who is a BBB, uh, sorry, BBC specialist disinformation reporter. She was talking about who starts viral information, who spreads it on the topic of coronavirus. And this video provides a good starting point to, to grasp the concept of fake news and the common types of people who create and share it, to give the students an idea who is behind misinformation and what motivates them. So the video talks about uh, I'd love to show you the entirety of the four minute video, but time doesn't allow for that. So there are seven types of people who start and spread fake news. What I did to uh, in class was I created a Google Docs because this was, uh, well, and it still is, it's still all online. So I sent the students a link in Microsoft Teams and we all watched it together. And we had a collaborative listening and writing task where they had to identify the types of people. So politicians, celebrity, conspiracy theorist, scammer, insider. And so this section here that's circled. So this is verbatim what the students wrote. Uh, if you would like to hear a more detailed description uh, I, I dare say more accurate, then yeah, please follow the link. This is what the students uh, got from this activity. Uh, they could, yeah, they could identify the, the types of people. 
and write a brief description about it. And then we had the, the second uh, circled section here, the students example. So I wanted the students to apply this knowledge and to just gauge their general understanding of fake news that they've seen in social media. So just some interesting ones that uh, from a politician, uh, I think we maybe might know who the politician is. COVID was created in a lab in China and the conspiracy theory that coronavirus is not real or 5G. So they could easily come up with some fake news that came from that type of person. So the next lesson I did was I created a fake news reading checklist. And I, in thinking of the types of questions that I wanted, I consulted a, an exhaustive list of this conceptual framework. Don't worry, I'm not gonna read it all out. It's not gonna be death by PowerPoint. So I would just like to draw everyone's attention just to the name here at the top, Kellner and Cher. So just a bit of a backstory behind the creation of this conceptual framework, this critical media literacy conceptual framework. It's basically a condensed literature review of all of the critical media literacy uh, literature there's been for the last 15 years. So Kellner and Share, it was created by Kellner and Share in 2019 from over a decade of research in what it meant to critically examine media text. Uh, they are seen as the leading academics in this field, having originally defined the term critical media literacy in 2006. And they've written several articles and books on the topic. So I saw them as an authoritative source. Now, getting back to my fake news reading checklist, I took some of these tenants and these questions and empirically tested them because there is a lot of unpacking here and this is meant for academics. It's not meant for, definitely not meant for students. So the first one that I was interested in is in social constructism. This is that all information is co-constructed by individuals or groups and of people who make choices within the social context. So one of the guiding questions is who are all possible people who made the choices that helped create this text? And you can see that that kind of reflects the BBC seven types of people and the students can possibly scaffold from that. The next one is language and semiotics. So this being in an Ellicos, uh, class, an EAP class. So language is really important. And so we look at the, that the language and semiotics and learn that each medium has its own language with specific grammar and semantics. The next one I was interested in the politics of representation. So that's all media messages and medium through which they travel always have a bias that there is hierarchies of power and privilege and pleasure. So the question here was what values, point of views, ideologies are missing or represented in the text. And I just took one more and that was the social environmental justice. So who does this advantage and disadvantage? So media culture is a terrain that where people, there is a struggle between positives and negatives about people and groups and issues, and it's never neutral. So to show you what the, well, what, what I wanted to incorporate from a literacy learning point of, point of view is I wanted to, I wanted the critical, uh, well, the fake news reading checklist to measure the students' text analyst literacy skills. So this is evaluating the particular choices made by the author in a text. And if it's persuasive text or how to comprehend the languages. So the particular choices made by the author. And as I was saying before, yes, it is a, it's a language 
course. And so comprehend the language, really dissect the language and look for the hidden assumptions, the bias in the text and how to examine this. So this is not actually how the, the, the fake news reading checklist looks for the students. This is just the PowerPoint visually aesthetic version. So the first question we have is to look at the headline. So we've chosen a fake news source. Uh, and the first thing we do is look at the headline. And on my fake news reading checklist, there's a couple of little sub questions like, does the headline use excessive punctuation, capital letters, and basically what grabs your attention? The next question is to question the publisher and author. So just to do a basic Google search, who are they? Are they a credible source? What claims does the author make? What evidence does the author give? Uh, and what language does the author use to persuade the audience? So the next one is what do other news sources say about this story? So this is just a cross tabulation, just to check uh, what other maybe more reputable news sources say about this exact same story. Who is advantaged and disadvantaged? So that's taken directly from the critical media literacy framework. And why do you think this person created or shared this new story? So this is going from fairly, fairly closed to more open and more abstract as the questions get longer. Uh, just to make it visually easier to categorize, I also put it in just a table form, just for the last section, which person and why they did it. So to give you a look at the, this is the second lesson. So a nice easy one to start off with, uh, this was in May, was something to do with coronavirus and social distancing, something that all the students could immediately understand. And a good website for finding fake news is called uh, Polyfact. And this website specializes in fact-checking journalism, giving a false, uh, if you could see in the middle here, I'm not sure if you could see my cursor. Uh, so this gives a false meter ranking to popular news articles. So for educators, this is, uh, this is really interesting it covers uh you can cover fake news in class with this resource uh, it gives you an example of the news story and it breaks it down too much <laughs> it's too it's basically the teacher's manual uh, and so <clears throat> on the right i sent the link to the students about this video uh, about this fox news anchor challenging the effectiveness of social distancing so I gave them the link. I told them it was fake. Then I applied the fake news reading checklist. And we went through those aforementioned questions. And this is what we came up with. So to question one, the use of no is overly certain, presumptuous and inaccurate. Question two, the author doesn't offer any scientific evidence. Surprise, surprise. Uh, she claims that social distancing does not work. And when we investigated the author, we found out uh, that she was yeah, a TV reporter, a celebrity, not a health advisor or a medical researcher. Uh, when we looked at another more reputable news source, the Houston Chronicle, they flat out said that, that uh, Loring falsely claims that there was no uh, scientific basis for social distancing. And <clears throat> the next thing what we did is through YouTube, we got the transcript and we dissected all of the language. Uh, which greatly assisted the student's comprehension. And in that, we found the snippet of information which was really interesting and that it was only, the only evidence was an ob observational study and she quickly says, not peer reviewed. So this was the real finding that this was well and, well and truly a fake news uh, source. So basically just to repeat, 
with uh, find a, a news, a fake news source, read the headline, Google the author, watch a video or conduct a semi-analysis, a semiotic analysis of the images or text. And yeah, and if it's the case of video, read the video transcript. YouTube provides all of its uh, content in a transcript, which is really convenient. You can just download it and give it to your students. So the next lesson is to get the students to choose a fake news story of their own, something they're interested in. Uh, and this incorporates all good things uh, like the students uh, in student selection and uh, making it student centered. And in terms of incorporating students first language in the text used for critical analysis, it can, it's proposed that it can aid critical literacy acquisition for ELD students, according to Alison. Uh, the critical language awareness can be more easily developed when ELD students first language forms the centerpiece of the literacy tasks. And so operationalizing this study, the students could find something in their native country that incorporates L1 and they used L1 in the text choice and explained L1 in L2. So some examples that the students came up with was a hoax by a Chinese, sorry, a hoax by a government affiliated Chinese medical firm that found a cure for COVID-19, a Hongkinese senator's claim that face masks can be reused if you steam them. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll run through these a bit quicker. Uh, a false claim by Tim Allen, Tim Allen made a statement about the cost of Trump's wall and a satirical news article on police violence, uh, which is an interesting point to make that fake news can be passed off as satire. So to summarize, the students made a fake news response, which was the example that I showed you earlier. They created, they used that source and then they picked it apart and said what was basically uh, why it was fake. So the takeaways from the critical media into uh, critical media literacy intervention in my class were that social media was a relatable medium. All of the students could easily find it, find sources. They all stated in the focus group that they've seen a lot and they're frustrated and they would like to cover it in class. The meta language refinement, typically question the author is in Google search the author, what type of person are they? What profession are they? What are their motivation? This all allowed effective classroom meta talk. So the students were learning about critical literacy language through using this exercise. Translanguaging allowed students to incorporate their language one, which eased their communicative stress and their engagement. The transcripts and language choices allowed for an in-depth analysis of power and representation And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you everyone for staying around. Thanks, Brad. Thanks for sharing your checklist and your other tools for analysing fake news. It was um, really useful and really interesting. And there was some interesting discussion in the chat as well um, with other resources that people use too. It's a, it's a very timely conversation at the moment as well. Does anyone have any questions for Brad?
Okay, I think that's mainly comments. I can see the comments, wait, hang on. Uh... Yeah. All right, well, if there's no questions for Brad, then we might wrap up for today. So thank you again to both of our presenters. Yeah, my pleasure. And thank you everybody for coming. Uh, I'd like to especially thank Christina from Pearson for attending today. Pearson is our partner in presenting Bright Ideas. So thanks for coming and emceeing today, Christina, as well. And right. tomorrow is day thanks three. Thanks for having us. No worry. Tomorrow is day three of the event and we hope to see you all there. Have a great evening. Thanks again. Bye. Thanks.